Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer. I'm glad that you've joined us this day as we celebrate the continued resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And no matter where you are, I pray that you're safe, I pray that you're healthy, and I pray that you're just going to spend some time the next hour or so just worshiping God, thanking Him for all the blessings that you've received so far, that He would keep you safe and, and help you through this very troubling time. I know here at Redeemer we've been going through a lot of challenges and a lot of changes uh, of how things are working. And uh, our whole online worship has been in the process of, of evolving over the past several weeks. We initially began with just <clears throat> we initially began with just an audio feed, and then we were able to bring in a camera or two so that you can hear a little bit and see a little bit of what was going on. And now uh, we have multiple cameras that we're able to work with. And over the next uh, couple weeks, we're going to be able to improve the quality of the cameras. And I, I just pray that as we do these things, it makes your time of worship with us uh, a lot more meaningful. I, I hope it feels like you're actually here in church as you worship with us, no matter where you are. Uh, we do have the bulletin online for you to follow along with. You can get that on the face page of our website where it says at the very top corner, it'll say worship. Uh, you click on that tab and a worship bulletin will come down. And then when you click on the worship bulletin, you'll have the, the, the bulletin for this morning service and you can follow along with that. Uh, also, if you have a prayer that you would like included in our service this morning, I invite you to uh, fill out a prayer request. They're at the very bottom of the web page. It says prayer request. Fill that out and send it off to us. And as long as we get it here uh, uh, in time uh, using the technology that we have, then we will include that prayer in our worship service this morning. If not, we'll bring it in next week and use it throughout the week with our prayer team. And, and finally, we really need your support. Uh, not only this church, but churches everywhere need your support. And that support starts with prayer. I, I hope that you spend some time each day praying for churches and their pastors and their staff as we do everything we can to continue to reach our world with this message of hope, this gospel message of Jesus Christ. Uh, no virus can stop the good news of Jesus, and, and it is so important that we continue to support that. Also, if you uh, can give a gift, that really helps us continue to pay the bills, to make the improvements that we got, but also to help those people that are going through some difficult times. And at the bottom of the webpage, there's another button that says online giving. You can click on there and you can make a gift right there, or you can even set up a uh, continuous giving. Maybe each week you want to give a, a certain amount, and you can do that right there. Uh, I just pray that uh, as we continue to worship, uh, that the Lord speaks to your heart, but that soon, soon we'll be able to gather together with God's people in his house. Would you join me for a word of prayer? Lord God, as we gather together this morning, I pray that no matter where these people are that are listening today, that you would be there with them, that you'd reassure them of your love and your presence in their lives. And as we gather together as your church, a church that is fractured and all over the place, but it is still your church. I pray that you would be with us, that you would speak to us through your word and through the message today, that you would reassure us of your love and reassure us that because your son has died and risen again, we are loved by you and are saved. It is in your holy name that we pray. Amen. This morning I want to do things a little different. Normally we begin with a couple hymns. Today we're going to turn it over to our praise band, Redeemed, and they're going to lead us in a couple songs as we get our hearts and minds ready to worship the Lord. Good morning, church. Please, wherever you are with this, join with us and sing, and let's start this Sunday of worship off the right way. Here we go.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess the transgressions of the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. As we prepare ourselves this morning to make our confession before God Almighty, would you join me first for a moment of silent prayer and reflection. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you join me now as we read from the 116th Psalm? I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me, the pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed even when he spoke. I am greatly afflicted. I said in my alarm, all mankind are liars. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. We continue now with the singing of the Gloria Patre. Glory be to the Father and to the 
Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Upon us. Glory be to God on high and on earth, peace, good will toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly. God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us, for Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. O God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you join me now as we read from the word of the Lord? The first reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 2, beginning with verse 14a. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Let all the house of Israel, therefore, know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, every one whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them saying, save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. The epistle reading is taken from 1 Peter chapter, 17, beginning with, chapter 1, beginning with verse 17. If you call on him as Father, who judges impartially, according to each one's deeds. Conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, 
not with perishable things such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory is like the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what is this conversation that you're holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, Mighty indeed in word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them and all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road? While he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they went and told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. A reminder that if you'd like to have a prayer included in our worship service this 
uh, this morning, that you go to the face page of our website at the bottom. You can uh, press on the button that says prayer request. Go ahead and submit that prayer request to us, and we'll do everything we can to include that as we pray in just a little while. But for now, would you join me as we sing a hymn? Let's sing together, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. How are you holding up? I mean, with everything that we're dealing with right now, how are you doing? This virus has affected every single one of us in one way or another. In fact, here at Redeemer, today is the sixth Sunday that we've not been able to gather together as God's people here in this church building to worship him. And so the question that all of us are asking is, when will all this be over? This weekend is absolutely beautiful here in Southern California. The sun is out, uh, the temperature is warm. It's perfect weather outside to, to call your friends and your family and say, come on over, let's have a barbecue. But we can't. Today would be a perfect day to go out and play a round of golf, to go out and watch a baseball game. Perfect weather to go and spend the day with your family at the beach. But we can't. And so we stay home. Watch a little television. Maybe binge watch a series of something or other. Turn on the news and then, then you're bombarded with all the troubling statistics and information about COVID-19. We are blessed to live in the most amazing country on this planet. We have more freedom, we have more opportunities, we have more luxuries that we enjoy. And yet because of an invisible virus, we're not able to enjoy most of the benefits of living in the United States of America. Now for a lot of people, all of this is beginning to take its toll. We're tired of having to put a mask on every time we leave the house and go someplace. We're tired of having to stay six feet away from everyone else. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to shake someone's hand. I'm ready to, to, to hug someone or to receive a hug. 
but I can't. You see, we're not able to enjoy the life that God intended us to enjoy. And when that happens, things become dark. And if you stay in that darkness long enough, anxiety and depression can set in. And before you know it, you give up hope. You stop thinking that life will ever be good again like it was before. In our gospel reading this morning, we read the well-known story of those two followers of Jesus who were walking along this road on the way to Emmaus on the afternoon of that first Easter Sunday. And as they walked along, they discussed the events of all the things that had happened over the previous three days. Now, as you read and as you study the story, you can't help but notice how differently the moods of these two men change over time. In the beginning of our story, their mood is downcast and and they're filled with despair. But then as they walk and they talk, a stranger appears and he begins to walk with them and as he does he asks them what are they talking about now the response to that question really gives us an idea of how those men felt and it's found in verse 17 of our text after the stranger asks what are they talking about this is how they respond it says they stood still looking sad These two men were sad because a friend of theirs, Jesus of Nazareth, had been crucified. And now his body lay dead in a tomb, so they thought. They were sad because they believed that Jesus was a special person who had been sent from God. You know, I, I can imagine what those men were thinking about. How life was so good before everything changed. Kind of like how so many people today are thinking back to everything that they used to be able to do and and enjoy before coronavirus. I'm sure those two men were thinking about the miracles that Jesus performed. All the people that he healed. The way that he he dealt with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Every time they tried to confront him and, and trick him into saying or doing something wrong. And that statement that he said about being the son of man... Who could forget that? They were sad because they had followed him now for some three years. And during that time, they got to know him really well. They saw him cry when a mutual friend of theirs, Lazarus, died. They saw him enjoy life as he celebrated with some friends at a wedding in Cana. And and then, because the groom didn't plan for as many guests and didn't order enough wine, they watched Jesus turn water into wine. The first miracle. They saw him get angry at the deplorable things that was going on in the temple, all in God's name. How he overturned the tables of those money changers and and drove them out of the temple building. These two men were sad because their friend that they loved was dead. They were sad because they had heard some news, some disturbing news, as they were leaving Jerusalem that morning. News that the body of their friend Jesus was now missing from his grave. They were sad because they couldn't understand who would want to take his body or for what purpose. Yeah, these men were sad. So sad, in fact, that as they walked, they walked with their heads down and their eyes focused on the ground right before their feet. They walked as if they were carrying the weight of the entire world on their shoulders. It was probably those words of one of them, the Bible says his name was Cleopas, that really gives us a clue to their sadness. He he said, we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. You see, these two men were in a state of despair because all of their hopes and all of their dreams for this friend of theirs, for Jesus, had been shattered. They had hoped that he might be the one to bring their nation out of bondage, out of the hands of the Romans. They dreamed that Jesus just might be the one to restore Israel back to its true identity. They hoped that he had been the Messiah, the one that they had been waiting for for centuries. But after they saw him die on the cross, after his body was placed in that tomb, 
after that large boulder was rolled in front of the entrance to that tomb, sealing it shut, all of their hopes and all of their dreams were dashed to pieces. So yes, they were in a state of despair. They were in a state of hopelessness. And this strange man, who according to the text, seemed to just suddenly appear out of nowhere, could see their sadness as he walked with them. He could feel their despair. He he could sense their hopelessness, their confusion, their grief about their friend, this Jesus of Nazareth. But then this stranger began to talk to them. From verses 25 and 26, he says, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And then he explained God's plan of salvation that was laid out for them in Scripture. How Jesus fulfilled all of these plans. And he explained that all was not lost. There was still hope. And he must have done a convincing job because as they approached this village of Emmaus, the two men asked this stranger to stay with them, to stay and have dinner and spend the night. You see, their mood of sadness and despair was changing because this man and all that he said and all that he had done had begun to change their outlook. They went inside, they sat down together to share a meal, and that's when it happened. Picking up at verse 30, it says, When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him. The man who had walked with them, this man who had talked with them, this man who had shared a meal with them was their friend. It was Jesus. Now they knew that he was alive and their hearts were now filled with joy. The Bible says that they recognized Jesus. And when they recognized him, he suddenly vanished from their sight. But even though he vanished, they were no longer filled with sadness or, or despair. You see, they had experienced the risen Christ. And that changed their lives forever. Through the sharing of this meal of bread and wine with Jesus, which I got to tell you sounds a whole lot like Holy Communion to me. Upon sharing that meal, their eyes were opened. Not only were they able to recognize Jesus, they were now filled with a, a passion, a desire to go and tell everyone what they had seen and what they had experienced. And here's the thing. Just like those two men who met Jesus on the road to Emmaus had their eyes opened, your eyes could be opened as well. You see, when we gather for worship, no matter whether it's here in this church or or wherever you are right now listening to or watching this, this message being delivered over the internet... When we come to worship with all of the brokenness of this world that's that's closed our eyes to God's love, when we gather and worship, our eyes are opened and we can again see God's incredible love for us. Many of us enter God's house with the same kind of sadness and despair that those men who walked on that road to Emmaus were experiencing. We're sad because of a death that we're grieving Someone that we had loved who's been called out of this life. Or maybe because of a a relationship that's ended. We come in a state of despair because of of our failure to live up to our own expectations or the expectations of other people. We come in with heavy hearts because life hasn't always gone the way that we wanted it to or expected it to. We come with the weight of the world on our shoulders not knowing if we can bear it any longer. And to all of this, Jesus comes to us through his word and his sacraments. And he explains to us each Sunday and he reassures us that he is our God. He's the one who has suffered for us and he now relieves us of all of our burdens. He carries our loads and he walks with us along the path of life. He opens our eyes to the miracle of Easter 
and proves that he is risen. My friends, Jesus is with you. You're not alone in this world. You have a Savior who walks with you, who talks with you, who cares about you, and who loves you. So every time that you kneel at your bedside and pray, every time you sit down at the, at the dining room table and open your Bible and begin to read, every time you gather with believers in a church like this and receive Christ's body and blood and that sacrament of Holy Communion, Jesus opens your eyes a little more. He gives you the strength and the courage and the hope to face each day. No matter what you're facing, no matter where you are, or no matter what you're struggling with. He's there for you, and he loves you. Amen. This time I'd like to invite you to join me as together we now confess our faith in our triune God as we repeat together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This morning, as we pray together the prayer of the church, I invite you to respond with the words, hear our prayer as I end each of our petitions with these words, Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray. You've heard our pleas for mercy, O Lord, and you've given up your Son to be our Savior. Hear us now as we come to you on behalf of ourselves and all people according to their needs. Our hearts have burned within us as your word has been preached and read. Keep our faith from going cold and grant us grace so that we may never waver in our faith or succumb to temptation. Give to us and to our children receptive hearts so that we may hear and upon hearing believe and upon believing remain steadfast in this faith and hope all of our days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless your church, O Lord, so that she welcomes the stranger in Christ's name and manifests the unity of faith and the bonds of love. Be with all of us who are separated because of this pandemic and preserve our faith through your holy word until we're finally able to gather together in your house to worship you. Bless Matthew, our synod president, Mike, our district president, Tom, our circuit visitor, and all the pastors who serve here and throughout your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, guard and protect our nation so that we can enjoy peace and security in the face of threat and danger. Bless Donald, our president, the Congress of these United States, Gavin, our governor, and all state and local officials. Grant them wisdom and the ability to make good decisions to keep us safe during this pandemic. We especially ask for your protection and blessing upon all emergency personnel and first responders, all medical workers, and the members of our armed forces. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Deliver us from all our afflictions and grant us strength to bear all our burdens. Hear us as we pray for those we bring to you in these petitions and those whom we name in our hearts. Lord, we continue to pray for Doug as he undergoes treatment for cancer. Lord God, we ask that you remove his disease from his body and make him well again. We pray for Chris, a, a daughter of a member who's just 
undergoing some difficult times and in need of your healing, Lord. Lord, we pray for Gracie, who died yesterday from coronavirus. Lord God, be with her husband and her sons as they grieve. Give them the comfort and support that can only come from you and the reassurance that those who die in faith are gathered into your loving arms. And one day we will all be reunited. We pray for a nephew who's on drugs and has run away from home. Lord, protect him. Give him clarity of thought. Allow this addiction to be released from him and bring him home. Lord, I lift up to you all those that are on the front lines right now trying to keep people safe and healthy during this pandemic. Lord, be with them. Give them strength. Be with those that are ill, those that are hospitalized. Lord, I, I pray that you would lay your healing hands upon them all, that you would restore their, their, their health and their vitality. Lord God, we all, an entire world is looking to you for relief from this virus. And we know that you and you alone are the one who can bring all of this to an end. And so, Lord, we come to you asking for mercy to be with us and to free us from this sickness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, stay with us and be our strength in weakness and our hope in time of despair. Your gracious will once kept the saints in faith even unto death. Help us, we pray, with them to keep our faith strong so that we may be faithful when, when Christ comes again in his glory to bring to fulfillment all things once and forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving that we bring to you this morning. Receive and bless our tithes and offerings so that your church may have the resources needed to proclaim your gospel and care for the poor and those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These and whatever other things we need, O Lord, we pray you to grant us in the name of and for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose death has made full atonement for our sin and whose resurrection has granted us the promise of our own joyful resurrection to eternal life. Hear us now as we pray as he himself has taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. I want to thank you for joining us to worship with us again this Sunday as we've been doing this now for some six weeks online. I pray that your family stays safe. But if you have a need, if you have a concern, please reach out to us. Also, if you're listening and tuning in to us, whether it's, it's live right now or maybe the recorded broadcast that you'll hear sometime in the future, shoot us an email. Let us know how God's word is coming to you. Let, let us know if there's some improvements or some suggestions you have to, to make this, this time of worship even more meaningful. All of this is done for you because God has brought us together to share his love. And I, I pray that you can receive that and just find comfort in knowing that he's there with you. Would you join me now as we sing our closing hymn this morning, The Church's One Foundation.